Today we're going to be have a looking at my 6mm English Civil War collection. These are all Bacchus uh, miniatures, uh, every single one, no exceptions, um, apart from the bases which obviously I customised from elsewhere. I in fact even got the flags from Bacchus as well uh, and then applied those to the various regiments. Now this collection is intended to roughly represent the Edge Hill order of battle. I don't know why I said roughly, because actually I have aligned it to that. Uh, and the intended rule set would be my preferred Carnage and Glory 2, um, for which uh, I have fudged the base sizing a little bit in order to get them to fit in and also to represent the miniatures in a way I would like, pleasing me on the base. Uh, it's, it's sort of that multi-dimensional sort of concessionary agreement you have to make with yourself sometimes between what the frontage requirements are, what they convert to in terms of millimetres for bases, how many figures you can fit on each base and how they look. And I wanted nice sort of chunky diorama stylish bases um, and also to get a decent number of figures on and not be faffing with too many smaller bases on this occasion. So I've traded in for pike blocks with their, their wings or sleeves of musketeers in each case for the infantry with cavalry to follow later. Uh, in terms of how I've organised painting them to begin with, I've tried doing them brigade by brigade to begin with. So we'll just run along the line and have a look at those. Uh, so first up on this side, this is, well, I should say first of all that each of the regiments is denoted, I've written on the underside, uh, which pike block corresponds to which. Uh, so as it says there, that is Sir Charles Gerard's uh, uh, regiment and his block of pike in the centre, uh, and the three regiments that make up his command, which are Dives and Dutton's regiments behind, uh, with Gerard in front. Uh, and as you can see, I have tried to make the musketeer sleeves or wings uh, a little bit denser and deeper because from my own interpretation, just reading some of the material, this is sort of the way that they should look rather than in thin, sort of longer, too deep lines. And obviously I've had to then decide, OK, how many figures to have in ranks. I think they're meant to be six deep. So here there are three deep because six deep would be a lot of figures and a lot of depth to the base. So I've sort of compromised on that sense. Uh, and you know, they need a bit of space to operate in as well. Yes, they can close up to the three rank uh, fire delivery sort of mode, the Swedish salve, um, but I've just represented them in these nice blocks. And then you've got the little officers and NCOs and drummers just floating around the flanks, which is uh, nice and colorful and adds a bit to the bases. And then the sort of standard pike block in the middle. In the case of each regiment, I have uh, tried to identify as loosely as of course we're able with these things, the colors of the various uniforms that they should have. Uh, and then they're, they're fairly uniform. I know that wouldn't necessarily be the case, especially at Edge Hill. But to begin with, I just want to get into the rhythm of painting the figures. Uh, so as you can see here, they are generally quite uniform. Then where I've started to diverge painting things later on uh, is with the later regiments, which I'll show you on this flank here. And you can see that the headgear um, starts to vary, the uniform colours start to vary. That's not actually too difficult to do. You paint them in batches, you split the strips up and choose, okay, a few of them are going to have this colour and a few of them are going to have this colour as you go along. Now this brigade on this side, this is Sir John Bellasai's uh, brigade with his regiment at the back there. And then the two other accompanying regiments in front. Uh, and you can see there a little bit of mixture of uniform colours, uh, headgear colours and things of that nature. What I haven't varied actually is the pike blocks. Um, largely because you're not going to see quite a lot of those guys jammed in there. But I have still given them some variation between units. Some of them have got the, you know, the buff waistcoats on. Uh, some of them have got colourful tunics on or whatever, instead of um, making them too similar between regiments, at least, whilst keeping them fairly uniform within the regiments. And then they've each got a couple of flags. As far as possible, based on, what again, what we know from literature sources that are available, I have attempted to make flags... Uh, available for them that are as closely appropriate as we can sort of imagine um, as far as we can do. So that's the six um, regiments or battalion of uh, English Civil War troops for the Royalists that I've done so far in the front. Uh, and then as we progress on to the back there, we can see that is my uh, go at the King's Lifeguard Regiment of Foot. Potentially a bit bigger at Edge Hill, but as you'll notice with all of them, I've gone for uniform numbers of figures and base sizes just to make it easier. They nominally, in my head, roughly represent about five, six hundred men each, which is probably about right for battalion at different stages of the war. I know they could be smaller than that as well, but um, it gives me some variation in the ground without losing too much sleep. Uh, next to them, there's a little base of commanded shot there. Um, some of which were potentially present at Edge Hill as well, and I just thought I'll try out some of the uh, firing uh, figures for those. Let's have a little zoom in there. 
and see how that works out. And those look kind of nice. Um, and I'll do a couple of bases of those for the order of battle for both sides. Uh, and then at the back here, we've got uh, two regiments of dismounted dragoons, sort of red dragoons and blue dragoons with the reds on the left uh, and the blues on the right. Although there are a couple of reds in the blue one as well. A little bit of uh, variation in the uniforms uh, and the dismounted command and horse holders behind. I have not painted the mounted versions of these yet. I slightly fear painting the cavalry, whereas I got into a little bit of a rhythm uh, painting the infantry. Uh, and that's it so far. Uh, as you say, it's been a bit of an experiment as I've gone along in terms of how to paint them. Once you get into the swing of it, you can actually paint these very quickly. Um, I paint up a whole uh, regiment or battalion at once, so I'll lay out all the musketeers, paint them all to completion, then lay out all the uh, pikemen command figures, paint them to completion, uh, and, then, and then base it, essentially. Although I have been waiting to complete a whole brigade at a time before basing, because it's a little bit faffy. But I've very much enjoyed doing it. There's something very pleasing about having them all ranked up uh, on mass like this as well on the table. Uh, ready to go as a collection and all the flags in place and so on. It's very pleasing to look at. Um, of the collections, bits and pieces I've got out at the moment, my wife's pointed at this one and gone, I like that one in particular because it's got that sort of vignette diorama feel to it uh, and nice sort of sense of bulk and uniformity. Uh, but yeah, that's it. The aim is to try and gradually generate the entire Edge Hill Order of Battle, clearly with a, a royalist preeminence at the moment because that's what I've started with. So they've got you know, seven units of infantry going on here a couple of units of dragoons and haven't done any command figures or artillery yet um, i have got a load more figures that have arrived from bacchus um, to start doing the parliamentary infantry and to do a couple more royalist infantry units and i have got quite a lot of cavalry to paint as well at some stage um, but that is something i have to fit in in between everything else and real life as normal um, you might be able to hear in the background my daughter gurgling away who uh, consumes quite rightly uh, the, the grand bulk of my time but in the margins, this is what we've managed to produce so far for the English Civil War collection. Um, I hope it's uh, useful to have a look at and have some inspiration. Should give you a nice sense of Bacchus figures as well, especially seeing them sort of ranked and massed up like this together. Uh, and in terms of actually, one thing that I know I'll get asked, the depths of the bases and the sizes of the bases. Let's just pop a little ruler out here so you can have a look at them. So the uh, the sleeves, the, the shot, they're 50 mil uh, wide. And then in the centre, the pipe blocks are 40 millimetres wide. And in terms of the depth, let me just find a convenient thing to measure. That's 40 millimetre wide. So uh, 50 by 40 for the musketeers, 40 by 40 for the pikemen in the middle there. Uh, and then in terms of the commanded shot, I think I've just used a 50 by 40 spare musketeer base, I think that is. Very similar. Let's just check. Yes, it is. Uh, and then the dragoons, uh, I wanted them a bit shallower and a bit more dispersed. So uh, as it turns out, they are 45 uh, millimetres by 30. And there you go. Uh, and then the uh, horse holder and command base are just squares. The uh, cavalry, once I start doing them, I believe I'd elected to put them on this size of base, the 50 by 40, with a dozen figures, uh, two deep, six wide on each. Uh, and I haven't made a decision about the command figures. I think all the command bases will probably be circles, as is my preference for making them stand out on the table. Anyway, that is my six millimetre English Civil War collection for this uh, six millimetre Sunday. I have to say that like it's a slogan, it's going to happen every weekend, possibly not. But this is the year of tiny miniatures for me. I'm very much into small scale six mil across different genres. I've got the American Civil War project to show you uh, in a forthcoming video and my uh, World War II Eastern Front collection, which is... Uh, fairly fairly large actually and I repainted about a year ago and haven't uh, had on the channel yet uh, and on top of that I've got some sci-fi bits on the go as well but uh, anyway in the meantime I hope you've enjoyed looking at this if you've got any questions about the collection or anything else besides uh, please let me know uh, and I hope you have a pleasant week